Hello everyone, this is Chara, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about 20 Splatoon 3 ideas and concepts I want to see. This can range from stuff related to single player or customization, to things about weapons and balance. So, without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Alright, first up, I'm not going to spend too long on this because everyone says it, but please allow us to skip the news. It has been forever in terms of just having news that you cannot skip and it just takes the game to load longer. However, on top of this, I'd like to add that if they are going to keep the news, then it should at least be something more informative. Like they do with the Grisco ad at the end, maybe there could be an option to add a tip about a weapon or a map or something like that. Though, I only want them to do this if the news is being skippable, or else please don't make it longer. This changes more of many things, but I'd love to have more private battle options. There's just so much more they could do with it to allow custom games to be better. I think ideas like having unlimited ink, no main weapons, faster special charge, maybe stuff like the Octo Expansion where you're stuck in an inkjet, or whatever special they have to replace that. Stuff like that would be a very interesting thing I would like to see. But on top of that, I would love to see more just host options. Please let the host of the room be able to transfer the host, go back after the weapon select screen if someone disconnected, and kick people who join the room who aren't supposed to be there. Just would make private battles a lot more in terms of what you can do with them, and private battles just add so much for playing for fun with friends, so the more options is really just the better. So one thing I would really like them to do is to add a League Team Finder thing. Currently, Leagues are only possible if you have people on your friends list. But if you're like 2015 me and you have no friends, then you need a way to be able to recruit other people to do League Battles. Being able to search for things with parameters like having a certain rank, playing a certain weapon, or having a certain special weapon could allow people to queue and make teams that could turn into friendships or teams for competitive play. It would allow people to do leak with a set group of people without having to meet and know those people, basically allowing a lot more opportunity to find players you enjoy playing with. Splatoon is easily more fun with a team than by yourself, so giving a way for people to find others to play with would be a huge asset to the game. This is definitely more of a personal thing, but I would really like them to be careful with their special balance design. A lot of specials in the game just aren't really that great to play against. Splatoon 1 had Kraken and Bubbler, which, while not horrible specials, were invulnerable, but in this game I'd argue they had things that were worse. Stingray is completely not fun to play against and can shut down objectives, and they pretty much had to make the weapon insanely weak in modes other than TC and Rainmaker in order to even balance it, which has made it less fun for the Stingray user. Armor takes away a ton of the depth Bubbler had in terms of having to chain to teammates. And Bubble Blower having an instant combo that you can pop instantly with bombs makes it just a not fun instant bubble explosion. Having more specials that require more thought, or if they do have positive upsides like health, should have huge downsides to go with it, such as Booyah Bomb being immobile and taking time to charge. Another thing I'd like to see in terms of specials is them to combine more of Splatoon 1 and 2 specials. We can already see this with the new lasers being a combination of Killer Whale and Stingray, and the Ink Zooka shooting inkjet-like blasts out of it. Combining Splatoon 1 and 2 special ideas for a few of the specials could lead to some really interesting and well-designed specials. I know I'm not the only person who feels like this, but man, the Splatoon 1 ports for this game were underwhelming. I really hope for Splatoon 3 they choose much more unique levels. A lot of them feel just the same and very bland, as well as not being very good stages, at least competitively. Splatoon 1 had so many unique and cool stages. Compared to the Splatoon 2 stages that all feel the same, I would really like to see more of the beloved ones come back. Mahi Mahi with its changing water level. Flounder Heights with its unique emphasis on verticality, Museum with the spinners and just overall being one of the best maps in either game, Bluefin Depot with its being split down the middle. Splatoon 1 definitely had some bad maps that should not be included, but I think overall there's a lot more better maps that weren't put in this game that they should put in the third game. They should port Splatoon 2 maps as well, obviously, but I think Splatoon 1 maps are the main one I'm worried about them porting over. Please do some of the more creative and loved maps in this game. Similar to the private battles, having more customization options in the training room would also be a great idea. Infinite ink would be super useful for weapons that run out of ink fast and are trying to do aim drills like the bamboozler. Being able to be in your special forever could help for things like practicing the brand new ink zooka, and having more variants of dummies or even playing against bots that could help you improve your aim could be useful. 
There's a lot of different things they could do, but having the training room be more customizable to be better practice while you warm up would be very helpful. Currently, Splatoon only has one type of sub-weapon, but I would really love it if they split it into two. This first category would include utility subs, such as Point Sensor, Toxic Mist, or Sprinkler, and the second type would include bombs, such as the Splat Bomb, Burst Bomb, Suction Bomb, Fizzy Bomb, you name it. The utility subs could just be a second sub-weapon that you get. It could even be mapped to the left trigger button that's currently unused. Not only would this make kits more expansive, now you have two different kinds of sub-weapons, but it would greatly improve the quality of kits as a whole. This is because a lot of weapons benefit from having a bomb, and bombs are useful in a lot of situations, even in both Splatoon 1 and 2. So having access to both would drastically improve the quality of kits and lead to a lot more viable weapons, which would greatly improve competitive play and ranked. Next up, I would really like it if they didn't include another hero mode. We've had hero modes for both Splatoon 1 and 2, and while the second one did improve on it by giving a bit more mechanics and multiple weapons to choose from, it was overall more of the same thing we've already seen, and having it a third time would be super repetitive. The reason Octo Expansion was such a good DLC is because it completely shook up the formula to give a unique experience. It was both different in terms of the weapons, the levels, the difficulty, and the story. Having a completely different change of pace was exactly what this game needed, and for Splatoon 3 I find it even more important that the base single player is a different and unique experience from what we've seen. Hero mode was a fun experience while it lasted, but now it's time to move on to a different kind of storyline that can develop the game's lore a lot further. Next up, I would really like a better rank system. The Splatoon 1 rank system was very good, but the one in this game is just horrible. Filling up the bar just as a matter of playing games, and for the most part until the higher ranks is something you can get just by playing. As for rank X, the matchmaking really has nothing to do with power. You can have 2900 power players matched with 2100, and it happens all the time. This means not only is there a large skill gap with all of the players in a lobby, but the teams are often stacked very unevenly on one person's side. More even matches are more fun and are more helpful for people to improve. So I think having a different rank system that more accurately ranks people together would be a good option. If they are insistent on keeping the rank X and bar system, I would appreciate it if they made the rank X power system the entire rank system, and then after that leave an option to wait for longer games to merge with people closer to your power level. This would just be a simple checkbox, and if you put it, you might have to wait a few minutes, but you'll be matched with people within plus or minus 200 of your power, so that way you can have a more even game if you are okay with the wait, and if you're not, you don't have to. This is another really simple one, but please have all the main weapons return. It's probably a lot easier to port main weapons from Splatoon 2 to 3, considering they are on the same console. If they could do it for the entirety of Splatoon 1 weapons, there's really no reason not to for Splatoon 3. There's no main weapon that really has a huge problematic design, and all of them are really fun. Even one main weapon not being included would mean a lot of people who enjoy that weapon are no longer able to play it. And especially with another game on the same console, I think it's important to have all the options and more of the previous game. So I'd really appreciate it if they didn't leave any weapons out. I really think it's about time Nintendo gets rid of rotations. Rotations were a cool idea, and originally I kind of liked them, but there's something that's grown really tiresome over the years. There's just so many maps now that you often don't get to see some at all, and having the maps be random means you get some rotations that really aren't fun to play on. The way I think it should be is for ranked modes you can choose the mode you want to play on, and when you get matched in a lobby it'll have a series of five randomly chosen maps, and everyone in the lobby can vote on them. The winner of the map on that vote will be the one that's played on. This is kind of similar to what they have in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but without the pure random option. Not only do I think this is a good idea in terms of having more preferred stages be played, while still having enough randomness in the stage pool selected to where maps aren't completely left out, but it also gives Nintendo a lot of data on what stages people are preferring to play on on what modes, which means when they go to rework stages, they have a lot of info on what stages people like and stages people don't like, which would allow them to better design maps for the future. Alright, hear me out on this one. I think it would be a great idea if you could return to the old Splatoon 1 and 2 hubs. 
Not only would this be nostalgic for people who have played the games and introduce the hubs for people who haven't given opportunity to see the idols, but I think they could greatly implement it to the new gear system. What if gear returning from the first game had to be bought on the first game's shops? Gear returning from the second game had to be bought in the second game shops. And new gear on the third game could be thought in the third game shops. You could have this with weapons as well, and maybe accessing Salmon Run still has to be done from the second game's hub. It would be hard to fit in lore-wise if they're going with the whole Inklings transition from city to city, but like with people still playing Splatoon 1 nowadays, I doubt all of Inkling society has moved on from the hubs, and having them have their own unique appearances and options would give them utility. It would also make it a lot easier to buy all the gear in the game, since you would have multiple shops to buy hats, shirts, and shoes. Also, you have a really easy way to get to each hub, the trains. We've already seen trains in Splatoon 3, and there's a train station right outside the Splatoon 1 hub. Easy way to go from hub to hub, and even to the other single player campaign that this game will have. I don't have much to say on this one, just Nintendo, please make the servers better. Especially the tick rate, which basically is kind of like a refresh rate for this game. During battles is lower in this game at 16, when Splatoon 1 was at 24. Like, come on. If Splatoon 3 can't at least be the same as Splatoon 1, it should be higher. For God's sakes, Nintendo, your internet's so outdated. It's about time you finally redo it if you want this game to have a better server life. At the end of Splatoon 1 and 2's lifespan, we've seen Nintendo add third kits. These are great ways to enhance the options of this game, and the Sheldon Picks and Kensa collections were great additions. However, I think it's about time other weapons stop being left out. I think, at the very least, every weapon in this game should have third kits. If not, maybe even some having a fourth kit. Kits are just an overall great thing to enhance the feel of a weapon, and are really easy to add since you don't add anything new, it's just different combinations. Kits are really useful and just give more variety and options for how people want to play their weapons. I think it's about time we start to get more than just two. This one to me is the absolute must Nintendo needs to do. The launch of this game needs to have more content. Splatoon 1's launch was so pitiful I don't even think I need to mention it, but even Splatoon 2's was bad. It didn't even have every weapon from the first game, and they rolled out weapons so slowly at only one a week, which was just one kit by the way, not even both kits, that it took forever to even get the amount of content that was in the base Splatoon 1. There were 8 maps in the game on launch. That is ridiculous. Two of them are ports of maps that were already available in the first game. Content at the start of the game needs to be much higher. Splatoon 3 should start with all of the weapons having at least their two base kits that were in Splatoon 2, and at least 12 maps. Next up, we need a revamped chunk system. Chunks were a unique addition where when you scrub gear, you get little pieces that you could use to make new sub abilities, such as swim speed, sub savoring, saver main, etc. While they're a nice addition that does take away a lot of the randomness from it, chunks can't really be bought, and the process of grinding chunks is still random. A lot of players who play the game actively have a fuck ton of coins. Once you've bought in all the gear and weapons, there is literally nothing to use it on besides scrubbing gear, so it'd be great if you could use coins to purchase chunks, or at the very least to purchase drinks that can help you get chunks. I would like to see them change the gear system to be less RNG based and have more ways of directly purchasing abilities. You could even have a way of changing the main ability for coins, even if it's a really expensive amount like 100,000, at least you could do it. Cause right now, there isn't a way to change the main ability for free and you just have to hope that ability exists because of the Splatnet shop. Having better ways to customize gear without relying on randomness is something that's long overdue. This next topic probably deserves its own video, and probably with someone who has a bit more experience in Salmon Run than me, but I would really appreciate it if they expanded the mode. Salmon Run just feels kind of unfinished. There's a lot of things they could do, such as an endless mode on the waves, or being able to customize the rounds you get for practice. But I think some basic things like a little bit more than five stages, and being able to actually pick your weapons would be a great addition. Especially considering you can change your weapons in land mode, which people obviously can't do right now. I just think there's a lot more they could do with Salmon Run to make it more fun and more customizable, and I hope they revisit it in Splatoon 3. 
Maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but I actually really like the idea of main power-up. Being able to buff the weapon while making it more gear dependent is a great way of adding balance to the game in a new way. However, I think where MPU did mess up is with damage up. Damage up is just not a good mechanic that has majorly reduced the amount of viable weapons in the frontline category. It makes approaching so much harder to the point where it really reduces the amount of weapons that can be played and how aggressively they can be used. The short range weapons that are good competitively are often ones that can play much more supportively and don't need to fight as much. It also made a lot of mid range weapons have a very fast kill time, with the bamboo being the prime example of killing in one shot, when it's clearly intended to have to kill in two, which just makes the game a lot less fun and a lot harder to play, since you can get one-shotted or killed fast by weapons that are, by nature, supposed to be exchanging their kill time for more range. While the other MPU effects may need some tweaking, as some of them require way too much to even have a slightly noticeable effect, they're not really a problem and haven't really impacted anything negatively. If anything, the other effects have actually increased the amount of viable weapons, especially the ones that increase range or painting capability. So I think MPU as a whole is fine, but MPU damage up really shouldn't be something we see again. Something Nintendo hasn't done yet with the single player is add a co-op option. I think it would be really cool to be able to pair up with two to four other people and be able to tackle single player with friends in a kind of co-op mode. Being able to use multiple weapons or work with people can make the experiences a lot more fun. Additionally, we have a lot of heroes by now with Agent 3, Agent 4, and Agent 8, and there's probably going to be a new one for Splatoon 3 as well by the looks of it, so it's not like there aren't access to characters who could be used for this multiplayer campaign. I think having more of a co-op option for single player would be really good. It's just something that could be an option, maybe the levels are harder or maybe there's specific levels made for multiple people. Being able to team up with friends just adds a lot to the experience and gives more opportunity to develop the game and its characters lore-wise, like they did with Agent 3 and Octo Expansion. And for my final hope, I would really like to see Nintendo try out some more hybrid weapon designs. Hybrid weapons would basically be combining two different weapon classes into one type of weapon. A really good example with this would be the Sloshing Machine or Explosher, which are combinations of sloshers and blasters. We could see something like Dooley's Umbrellas, being able to dodge, roll, and shield, a brush with some kind of roller rolling over capability, or maybe something like the brand new bow being combined with a blaster explosion or something like that, or combined with a Dooley class, maybe by having some kind of jump or roll out of the way after shooting. I think there's a lot of potential that could be done by combining two different weapon classes that could lead to some really fun and interesting experiences. Sloshing Machine and X-Splosher are really good examples of that, but I think they've barely scratched the surface with weapon ideas they could do, and combining classes would be a great way to add a lot of new weapons to the game. And there you have it, 20 hopes for Splatoon 3. Obviously there's probably many more ideas that I missed, but these are just the things I could think of at the moment. There's a lot of different things Nintendo could do with this game, and I'm really looking forward to what they have to show. If you've stayed all the way to the end of this video and enjoy my content, then subscribing really helps. I do my best to put out content for both competitive Splatoon 2, speculation for Splatoon 3, and a lot of other discussion and topic type videos. So, subscribing helps a lot with supporting me. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and be sure to let me know your guys' ideas in the comments below, and I will see you all in another video.